this was where it started. Suddenly and what began the case of the cotton kimono. Just a moment, darling. Just a moment. Somebody's in an awful hurry. I'm sorry, I wasn't dressed for you yet, sweetheart. I was just... on you like this? We were on our way to the theater. We are on our way to the theater. Well, uh... Aren't we? Mm, guess I owe the department something for that retainer they send me every month. Please, you'll have to throw yourself on the... Margo? I know the commissioner's mercy. I haven't seen a play in six months. I'm sorry. Homicide needs the help of a criminal psychologist. Well, what's it all about? The cotton kimono killing. And a detective named Springfield. The girl was killed on the fort. Up to date, we've gotten practically nowhere. Where does Detective Harrison Springfield come in? Well, Springfield was Sissy Chadwick's hometown. Harris was assigned to the case? Well, the girl had only been in New York for a few months. So we contacted Springfield. We got a lot of pretty useless data. Then, four days ago, Detective Harry Harris of the Springfield Police entered the case. He's been at it like a Trojan ever since. I think he needed the kind of help you can give. What's his trouble? I brought him along. Show him in, Margot. I really think he could tell you better himself. Drop in any time, Commissioner. And bring your friends. Thank you, Lamont. I'd like to see him alone, Commissioner. Oh, certainly, of course. Come right in, Mr. Harris. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. Well, how do you like our large, noisy city? Don't get to see much of it. I'm at work by 7 in the morning, I'm at home by 10 p.m. You see, I knew Sissy since she was a kid. I knew her people, Mr. Cranston. What have you found out so far? Not too much. They didn't locate the murder gun until today. Found it in the grating behind the Madison apartments where Sissy lived. It's been traced? Yeah. Stolen from Louis Mendes' pawn shop on 6th Avenue. What about the girl? Did she have any underworld tie-in? I don't think so. Any enemies? None that I heard of. Any boyfriend? Yeah. Alex Brown. Oregon 75883. He's a shipping clerk. Of course, you went to see him. With a couple of boys in uniform. I don't want to sound like a wise guy, but they let him get away with murder. You went only once? No. I went a second time. He didn't like the questions I was asking. totally male apartment. Can you turn the right place? Oh, undoubtedly. 
You know, this could be a charming room. Mr. Brom doesn't believe in the decorative, Margot. Except, unless I'm mistaken, for this. A little out of key, wouldn't you say, Alice? Yeah, put that down. Put that down and get out of here. My name's Cranston, Lamont Cranston. You may think of me as an emissary of Mr. Harris, the little man who dropped around here a couple of times. A couple of times? Don't you get a couple of times? That hyena has been on my back morning, noon, and night. I get up and go to sleep with him looking down at me. He's been here more than twice? I lost count of the times. So you tell him, will you? Will you tell him you might as well lay off me because you'll get nothing more out of me? I don't understand that, Brom. You keep the dead girl's picture so she can't be too bad a memory, and yet you refuse to help us. I can't help you any more than I have. I told Harris everything I know, but he keeps on after me. If I could help you catch a guy to kill Sissy, why should I hold out? Lamont. I'll be in the car. Pretty broken up, aren't you? Were you in love with her? It won't help to lie, Brown. They've traced the murder gun to a pawn shop in Sixth Avenue. The proprietor, Louis Mendes, won't have much trouble identifying the man who stole it. By the time I got there that night, she was dead. She was a nice kid. She worked in an office five days a week. Wasn't interested in running around. Wasn't interested in anything, I guess, much except me on the job and her singing lessons. Her singing lesson. She took singing lessons. This guy she took from. Yeah, he used to call her after hours, bothering her when he had no business. And then one night I got sore. What did she say? Well, she understood. She admitted he was nuts about her. She said she was going to tell him once and for all to cut it out the very next day. When was it? The day before she. It was the 3rd of February. Who is he? Oh, I'm not accusing anybody. Who is he? Grimbauer. Rollo Grimbauer. He's over on 58th Street in the Dunwoody Studio. Now, Miss Bettinger, let's go on up. Very nice, by the way. Very nice. dollars an hour, and for the untalented is unavailable at any price. You're disturbing this lady. Go on, Mrs. Bettinger. Oh. Good day, sir. Have it your own way, Professor. But it won't take long to get a warrant, or even a subpoena. I'm afraid I'll have to put you to that trouble. Don't apologize. It'll be a pleasure. to wait here over a soothing cup of coffee. We're going to need help on this, m'lady. Help from an old friend. The shadow? You there? You're quite sure. Very well. I want you to take this message. Tell him.
<laughs> What's that? What's wrong with you? I heard a laugh. Have no fear for your sanity, Grimbar. You are too shallow and evil for that escape. Who's there? I am the shadow. The shadow? Only the guilty need fear me. And I see the terror in your eyes, my friend. I'm all around you, here at your side, though your eyes see nothing. <laughs> you cannot escape me, Grimbar. What do you want of me? Justice for the death of Sissy Chadwick. I didn't give up. I swear it. I, I swear. You cannot lie to me. The shadow knows. No, I'm not lying. I... I was in love with her, but I, I didn't kill her. Then who did? Who did? This much I know, this much I'll tell you. The night before she was killed, I... I went to call on her. She didn't expect me. I walked in without knocking. Go on. And do you know who was there with her in her room? Who? It was the man. <laughs> Questions and answers. I didn't come for questions and answers. I'm going to take you down. What? I'm going to take you down and prove a murder rap. You're gone, even if it's for my murder. You're gone. You had an argument with her. Is that it? She kissed you off, maybe. You got there early and killed her because she was sore. Was that the way it was? Maybe you didn't kill her. I don't know anymore. Look here. Harris. You've been on your feet. You've been going on like this for hours. It's my angle. My suspect. Look, will you do me a favor? Leave me alone. Look, pal, why don't you Look, let me... Look, I brought him in, remember? Yeah, but you know what you're doing. Something I gotta do, I gotta. Come on, Casman. If you don't, we will. Now comes the tough part. Getting you in here was a walk away. Getting you out isn't gonna be so easy. What are you talking about? I thought this thing through now. Put two and two together. You didn't kill her, Alex. Yeah, then get me out of here. That's what I said isn't going to be so easy. same guy that killed Sissy Chadwick. Now listen, I'm going to call him back in here. And I'm going to ask you where you were at 4 p.m. today, at the time of the murder. Are you listening? What's the matter? I got to sell you on the idea of getting you out of here alive? Now look, I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to say 
You were out in the island with Rigo Park. You were out of the city, get it? You were no place near where the murder happened. Repeat it. Repeat it. Oh. I, I was out on the island in, in Rigo Park. Good. You'll be back in your own bed before midnight. Okay, fellas, you can come inside. You feel different now. I'm going to answer a few more questions. It's a rule with me. Always a nail a killer when I see one. Okay, here we go again. Where were you at 4 p.m. today? I was out on the island in Rigo Park. Let's do it. Okay. Take him, Cashman. Hey, what? Hey, what's this? You told us, chum. You took care of the Chadwick dame, and then you took care of Mendes. Mendes, eh? The pawnbroker you stole the murder gun from. And when we found the gun today, and we traced it, you knew you had to kill him fast to keep him from identifying you. I didn't have anything to do with it. Four o'clock this afternoon. In his house, in Regal Park. I don't know that I should do this. It's probably not too wise of me, Mr. Harris not being at home, but... Oh, you two do have such honest faces. I don't think he could mind. Oh, and you mustn't mind if I sneak in here in a few minutes to make the bed. You may think it's a little peculiar by making the bed so late at night, but... You know, when I have a, a rumor who's away all day and I can count on his absence, I take advantage of it to do all the little things I miss, so... Going to the circulating library, you know, devoting a little time to myself. You, uh, you won't mind, will you? Of course not. Charming, isn't she? Hmm? What's that? A round-trip ticket from Springfield. How long did the commissioner say the little man had been in town? Four days. Why? Very peculiar when you come to think of it. What is? That Sissy Chadwick should be wearing a cotton kimono to have dinner with her number one guard. Would she, taking it for granted that she was an average young woman? Of course she wouldn't. Why didn't I think of that? Unless, of course, everything she owned was at the cleaners, or she didn't have anything else to wear. Look, do me a favor, will you? Mm-hmm. Hop over to her apartment. Take a look at what she had in her closet. Oh, I do hope I'm not being a father. All right, Lamont. You'll be back, won't you? I'll meet you back at the house. Darling, you thing. Pretty as a picture. I suppose you, you'll find it hard to believe, but I looked very much like that when I was her age. Matter of fact, people used to call me Dolly. Though that isn't my name at all. Uh, my name's uh, Henrietta. How long has Mr. Harris been staying with you, Miss Henrietta? Four or five days? Why, no, indeed. No, he came here on a Monday, as I remember it. That's been two weeks ago. Not, not that I don't enjoy your company, but would you be staying much longer? I'm going to have to stay, Miss Henrietta. You've been housing a murderer. May I? No law against it. Thanks a lot. It's an idea of Mr. Cranston's. I shared lots of things. Plenty of things. How's that? Mr. Harris, you can leave Brom out of your thinking. What do you mean, leave him out of my thinking? He's booked for murder. Then they've got to let him go. Why? Because he's innocent. It may take time to prove, but he's innocent. He's being held for murder, miss. And he did it. That's not true. I happen to know my business. Sorry, Mr. Harris. You say Cranston told you to come up here? That's right. Why? 
Well, it's very simple if you'll just listen. Somebody else got here before Brown did the night of the murder. After all, a girl with a closet full of nice clothes isn't going to be wearing a cotton kimono to have a romantic dinner. It's ridiculous. Is it? After all, she loved him. I wouldn't be so fast with ridiculous, Miss Lane. Ridiculous to you, maybe, with what little you know. But if she was going to get dressed up pretty, she didn't have much time to do it in. Why not? Because she was in that kimono ten minutes before he got here. People are always so fast and loose with her. Talk about love. Ten minutes? How do you know? If you're waiting for... for him... You'll have a long wait, Mr. Cranston. I will. He told me he was home by 10 every night. Why did he say a thing like that? He never comes home before 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I've often wondered where he goes at night this way. I never did ask him but one time, and he answered me so strangely. What did he say? He said he'd been with the girl he loved. Don't you think that's strange? The girl he'd loved. Any idea who that could be? Not unless it's the young lady in the picture. What picture? I really shouldn't know about this, but you won't tell, will you? Her. understand how it was. And you wouldn't want to cause me any more trouble after all I've had. But you'd have to, Miss Lane, wouldn't you? You've got to realize I can't take any chances on... I'm not a... What's happening to me? <laughs> the shadow. Who's that? What was that laugh? <laughs> this is a trick. No, Mr. Harris. You are the trickster. You've murdered a girl because she didn't love you and put the man she loved behind bars. That's quite a trick, Mr. Harris. Who are you? You killed Grimbar to keep him from talking, and you killed Mendes. Why did I kill Mendes? You didn't want the pawnbroker to save Brom from the chair by telling the police he wasn't the man who robbed his shop on the night of the third. Did I say trickster? You're a magician, Mr. Harris. Who are you? I am the shadow, the fear of retribution in men's minds. I am justice. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs>